Um, okay, any time this time of year, you know, we are sitting here as opposed to being, you know, getting prepared for an upcoming game um, is obviously a, a disappointing place to be. Um, we didn't get it done this year. Um, you know, we were just too inconsistent, you know, throughout the season. Um, and there are plenty of areas to work on and improve as we get into the upcoming months. Um, you know, we're going to spend the next couple weeks, you know, really assessing everything, um, you know, roster, football operations wise from A to Z. Um, and then, you know, really with the goal of getting us to um, obviously where we're playing meaningful football at this point in the year. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of uh, good people in place, players, coaches, um, staff, um, and we're looking forward uh, and energized by the challenge of uh, you know making the necessary changes and modifications, um, you know, so that we're, we're we're playing good football at this point in the year. You know, being here in, in reflection mode and, and the finality of the season being over is obviously disappointing, uh, but I'm in no way discouraged uh, for the future of this football team. I'm excited about the core of guys that are returning. Uh, and then we're just determined to put in the work. We're determined to put in the work this offseason uh, to shape this team and uh, make sure that we really are just playing good football come next September. And, and there's a bunch of things that, that we need to look at. We're going to take our time, as you can imagine, as we pull this apart and look at every area uh, that we can improve. Um, I know you guys saw the news. Uh, I let Joe Woods go last night. Uh, you know, not an easy decision. Uh, I have a ton of respect for Joe, the person, uh, Joe, the coach. He's a, 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 a great, great man. He works extremely hard. He treats people the right way. I just felt like it was in the best interest of our football team to go in that direction. Uh, but he will land on his feet because he's a good football coach. Uh, but with that, I'll take any questions. Do you plan on any other coaching changes besides Joe? You know, t today was really about the players, Jeff. So I, I met with our players all day. I'll meet with our coaches this week, and we'll have conversations with everybody. Kevin, when you um, begin this search now for coordinator, do you alone interview candidates, or is Andrew and Paul involved? Yeah, well, I think with this type of decision, Tony, you want to get everybody's input. Uh, obviously, I'll spend a lot of time with the candidates and and you know cover everything A to Z, but I think it's important to get input from everybody. Did you feel like it was a, a philosophical thing or schematics or what what do you feel like went wrong on, on defense? Yeah, it's a good question, Mary Kay. I think you know you really have to pull it apart. It's never one thing. It really isn't. Uh, you know, there's things that I wish I could have done better uh, in, in that regard. So we'll look at everything. Um, you, you always look at scheme, obviously, but uh, it's 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 never one thing. It really isn't. I mean, do you feel like you guys might need to get bigger, you know, at linebacker and, you know, to, to stop the run? I mean, is that going to be a big focus going forward? A lot of these guys are inside linebackers that you're, I mean, you know, linebackers, coaches that you're interviewing. Yeah, about. I think what we are going to look very hard at all these candidates and, and schematically what, you know, they look at our roster, they look at our tape, and, and we start talking ball and, and what we could do differently. Those are all conversations uh, to make sure that then our personnel matches up uh, in the vision of, of what we want to do. Do you feel like it's a very attractive job with the players that are here? Yeah, I mean, I like I said to you guys, I, I believe in our core of players. Uh, I think we, specifically that defensive side of the ball, I, I think we have a lot of guys that can affect the game, can affect the passer, can, you know, good in the back end, all those type of things. So uh, we are certainly excited about uh, finding the right person. Do you think um, you, you yourself need to be more involved with the defense, just sort of more involved overall when you look at the – Thanks. Yeah, I think you look at everything into an off season. Uh, you know, my involvement with the offense, involvement with the defense, with special teams. You know, I try to be uh, certainly available to everybody and and help as much as I can on on all three sides of the ball. Uh, I think it's important that when you find the right people, uh, and we have a lot of the right people in this building, you empower them, you, you encourage them, and then it's my job to set people up for success. So. Uh, to your point of time, I think it's just important that I set our coaches up for success. And what are you looking for? Those lines of you looked at yourself, whether it's the play call, you talk about time, and there's yeah. almost so much time. That, for example, play calling or just even a different way of doing the play yeah, calling thing. Yeah, for sure. Apps open to anything that will help our football team. I really am. And I think that's what this off season and this month and, and meetings are, are about. It's about pulling everything apart, looking at everything. Andrew, when you talk about the, the, the core of this team, it, it's been together for a couple of years. You've had two off seasons. This will be another one where you're going to 
tweak the roster. I guess the question is, how much more talent do you need to, to, to get over the hump since the team has had a slide back in consecutive years? Yeah, I don't know that that's something that's, you know, let's say easily quantifiable. Uh, Daryl, you know, I think really our goal is to really provide as much talent as possible that fits within the vision of, of Kevin and his staff. So, you know, our pursuit of good players, there's not there's not going to be a limit to it, whether in time or um, volume. Um, we want to we want to make sure that we give our coaching staff and Kevin in particular the best ingredients possible. Kevin, is coordinator? Um, like, what are you looking for, and how important? is experience is either a coordinator or and or a head coach yeah i don't know that there's one specific set of criteria scott i think uh we're excited about some of the people that we'll be able to talk to and and everybody's resume is going to be a little bit different so i'm very open-minded in, in that regard uh, but just you know, this is a process that you got to stay true to i want to make sure that uh, we meet with all the candidates and understand what they're about um, but i think that's I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so to speak. You know, I want to make sure that we remain true to it, trust in it, and really get to know these candidates and see how that vision fits in with what we're trying to accomplish. Kevin, some of the defensive guys today kind of talked about, you know, maybe feeling bogged down with so much information and shortening that menu, which they thought Joe did a good job of in later games this season. I guess, did you feel that disconnect in the early parts of the season when these breakdowns were happening? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we kind of talked about it, Ashley. Uh, in the moment, there, there were some breakdowns, and, and we, we pulled it apart and looked at it and felt like there were some things that, that we could adjust, and I thought that did get better uh, for sure. But uh, ultimately, and, and you know, just my conversation with our, with our players uh, today, uh, we all share in this. Every single one of us shares in this. Uh, and you share in the wins and you share in the losses. And I think that's none of us uh, coaches, players, you don't hide from that. You, you make sure that everybody shares in it. And when appropriate, we, we got to find ways to do it better. Either of you guys, you guys had so many players that sort of underperformed this year, that really talented guys. Do you feel like with a you know, with a new coordinator, some new energy, that uh, that they will be able to raise the level significantly of these talented players that you have? Yeah, you know, I think Kevin mentioned a little bit earlier. It, it, it's never just about one thing, and I, I want to be clear: like this shouldn't just be a coordinator issue. Like it, it's it's not, you know. The defensive level performance is not just just about Joe. You know, part of it there are. You, know, you look back to being at this point. You know, decisions that you know you look back to the off season you would have done a little bit differently. And you know, also I think there is accountability with with our guys as well, right? Like we want you know our guys to, to seize the moment, and um, um, we all share we all share accountability with it, as, as Kevin mentioned a little bit earlier. Andrew, what gives you hope? Oh, you, you know, with the offense, you know, mixing the run and the pass. I mean. We saw six games, obviously weather and rust, but the last two games, especially yesterday, really kind of a drop off, not been a really a explosive offense, you know, for a full game. Yeah, I, I think that's part of this off season is making sure that uh, we're putting all those things together. Obviously, having a, a, the true off season with Deshaun, starting the season with him, uh, I think will be uh, obviously uh, you know a big deal as it relates to that, but. We want to make sure that we're scoring points any which way we can. We want to give our guys a chance to, to play fast. I, I thought there were really moments uh, with Deshaun in there that were, were some high-level football, and I thought guys were playing uh, really well. And it was it was the run game, it was it was the pass game, uh, and those are the exciting parts of this offseason. Just tapping into those things uh, even more, uh, being drilling down. Uh, specifically into what Deshaun does really well uh, and put together an offense around him. Kevin, yeah, one uh, of the themes uh, coming out of the locker room uh, the last couple of weeks has been the little things seem to really add up in the end to some, some bigger underlying things. So I guess my question for you as the head coach, what have you learned about, because everyone says leadership's not a problem on the team. There, there's leaders on both sides of the ball. But for you as the coach, what have you learned about maybe – your locker room and what it's going to take to extract that maximum talent out of those guys and to prevent those little things from turning into big things that end up holding back. Yeah, I mean, to your point on little things, uh, th this game it does, it drills down the little things and the little things become the big thing is what we, we like to talk about. And that can be alignment, <laughs> as simple as alignments. It can be as simple as doing your job on, on a given play. Um, but that's that's the game of football, and and we obviously came up short 
too often this season. So those are when you get to where we are today. Those are where you want to look at everything and, and where can we give our guys the advantages so that we can just go play fast. That the, the, the players today included, um, you know, have talked about there being way too many discipline issues, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, and that ultimately affected uh, the, the, the performance overall. Do you think that there was a leadership vacuum, and is that something that you feel like you guys needed to address on the defensive side this offseason, whether it be the D.C. or the personnel you bring in? Yeah, Jake, I think, honestly, when we're sitting here at this time of year and we look at the unit's performance, like, you know, we didn't necessarily have the right right mix in all areas, and you really look at everything. You, you really have to. Um, and that's not just, you know, talent or scheme. It's some of those other factors as well. But, you know, Kevin mentioned, like, you know, this game, it's one on the margins, right? You, I think, Kevin, you know, gave us a stat that I think, what you said, half the teams are between seven and, and ten wins. And I think probably all 18 teams that are sitting here today could probably say, man, if we just had these five plays back during the year, our record could be from where we are now to, to something different. And with the margins being so razor thin, you really do have to look at everything and make sure that everything's tied up in order to win football games. So, Andrew, Andrew uh, uh, you mentioned too about just like 18 things. For example, a bunch of coaches got fired today. You're with, here with Kevin for year number four. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about why you feel good about that, what your decision was on that? Yeah, I think, you know, first of all, I, I think we have a really strong you know, head coach. And um, I think he's, he's, he proved his very first year. He's smart. Um, he's good with our guys. He's creative. Um, you know, but the reality of it is like, we're all looking to make the necessary changes and modifications to make sure that you know we can reach our goals um, and have a really productive you know 2023, and that takes all of us, right? Like you know the head coach, he's he's out in front, he's the leader of the organization, and he bears a lot of burden um, and responsibility, and he gets you know really you know all all the blame when it's not necessarily all him. And our job is to make sure that we support the head coach, put him in the right environment um, to be successful. And it takes all of us. It takes all of us. And we know we have a good one in Kev. What about the attributes, though? So what, what, what have you seen in three years to say, OK, this is the guy that can take? I think his intelligence, his ability to re relate to players, his creativity, and his ability as a teacher. Andrew, can you give an assessment? <laughs> <laughs> can you give an assessment, Andrew, of, of your offensive line, and specifically the way uh, Jedrick Wills played this season? Yeah, you know, I think that's honestly something that we'll go through over the next week with the whole with the whole roster getting kind of removed from the season. But you know, by and large, pleased with that with that unit's performance over the course of the year, uh, run game, pass game, and honestly, even their ability to adjust to um, um, you know probably maybe a slightly different style of offense. Um, you know, once we made the the quarterback switch, but we do think that that's one of our strongest units. Um, we think we have a great um, you know, position coach and Bill Callahan there, and uh, we think that'll still be a a, a, um, a really important part of our team moving forward. Jedrick Wills, you think he played okay this year? Like I said, I think I think Jed definitely took strides this year. Um, I think, like many young players, like there are still areas where he can be more consistent. Um, you know, but we definitely thought he took a step forward this season. Andrew, statistically, uh, this the, the pass defense, the secondary was like top five, mm -hmm. really going back to about week six or seven in the league. The run defense conversely was maybe the worst in the league and it never really uh, improved much over the course of the season like how much of that was the scheme and how much is that you guys need to rethink personnel this offseason to shore that up yeah I think Jake when when the performance occurs like that it's it's never just it's never just one thing I think there are considerations for both um, you know I, I, I'd like to say it was like it's a silver bullet but it's, it's realistically probably a combination of factors between um, you know really how you deploy the players, the players that you have, and then also you just like a little bit of luck in terms of health as well. Going back to Jake's question about leadership and your answer about not having um, necessarily the right mix in all areas, I, I think of some of your top players and a lot of them are lead by example type mm -hmm. guys and they tell us that in, in some of the interviews we have when we ask them about leadership. Is there something having more vocal leaders, do you think that's something you need to address? I think the bigger focus is effectiveness of leadership as opposed to necessarily style of leadership. So ultimately, are we getting the results and the outcomes that are desired? And I think also the other thing is like, you know, people are leaders in different ways, as you mentioned. Um, so I, I, again, I, I'd probably more focus on effectiveness as opposed to, hey, you need you know, X amount that are in this way, X amount are that way. Um, so. 
that this year you beefed up uh, the analytics department with a few new hires. For two years running, ESPN has named the Browns the most advanced analytics team in the NFL in a survey of all teams. Do you think it's working? Yeah, I think, Tony, I think it's probably because of, like, um, you know, how analytics or how data is talked about, per, like, particularly in this market. It's a tool. Like, it's an area of, it's an a- area of your operation. And it's something that you can help to use uh, to inform decision-making in a, in a number of different areas. Um, it's not the end-all, be-all. It's not a silver bullet. It's a, it's a tool, you know, no different than, um, you know, areas that we have in the support staff or, or scouting or, you know, a consultant or any, anything along those lines. So uh, I know there's a lot of focus because of the article and things like that, but it's a tool that we'll continue to use. It's a tool that, um, you know, obviously many of the top organizations use in the league and, and really, like, it's used across any, every industry. So, um, you know, we obviously feel good about that group. Uh, they'll continue to be a resource for um, the team across all areas of football operation. To analyze your analytics department and decide whether you overuse it, it's too influential. We don't have an analytics group for that, Tony. I can tell you that. Um, yeah. Ultimately, we, uh, ulti- no, I know, I know what you mean. U- ultimately, we will we will use data as appropriate to try and make the best decisions. The results, the results would point to that something's not working in whatever formula you guys have put together and team building and game day strategy and all those things. So my question to you is, do you feel that it, it's being applied effectively? And if so, then, then maybe, I realize it's a tool and just part of the process, but that seems to be an area where you would think you'd have an advantage. And it, it just doesn't seem to be giving you guys the advantage and the results. I think it's natural to to look at really every every area in the operation when you're sitting here not playing playoff football, right? Um, and I think you know, if I by the line of question, it's no different than us internally, where you want to make sure you put your finger on every area where you can have improvement or push to make sure that we ultimately get the the results that are desired. Um, you know, that being said, like again, if it was you know, this league's so competitive and the margins are so small. And if there was just one simple fix, if it was like, okay, we'll just do this or don't do that, um, you know, our jobs would be a lot easier, that, that, that I can assure you. Um, data is something that's helpful, but ultimately we have to apply it correctly and, and, and make the right decisions in a number of different areas. Um, you know, like I just said to Tony, it's, it's not a silver bullet. It's not the only method that we'll use to make the major strategic decisions, whether it's in the front office or on the field. Um, but we feel good about you having that as a part of our toolkit, ultimately to get the team where it needs to be. Do you um, focus primarily on this first wave of four candidates that we've been able to identify so far uh, and really kind of dig in with these guys? Or would you cast a wider net right away? Remains to be seen. I think we're, you know, just starting out on this process, uh, so we don't have a time that it has to be done by in mind. But we feel good about some of the candidate candidates that we've identified already and, and are open-minded. You brought Jadeem and Clowney here twice, basically. It was a free agent. How frustrated were you were you to see how it played out last week with his comments, and also that journey of finding that other pass rusher to go with Miles on a more permanent basis? Yeah, obviously disappointed in terms of. In terms of everything surrounding that situation, um, you know, look, having a you know having a, um, uh, a you know a partner with Miles is, is certainly something that we've we've had for the past for the past three years. Um, I think the fortunate thing with the defensive line, probably a little bit different than the offensive line, is there are a number of configurations that can that can allow it, allow it to work. Um, you know, that's certainly a, a position group that we do value and will continue to value, no different than. Um, the offensive line on the offensive side of the ball, and uh, you know we'll continue to invest in it and you know make those decisions at the appropriate time. Andrew, looking back at it now, did, did the Watson trade impact this team's ability to make a credible run to the playoffs? Whether it was the distractions in training camp, Kevin talked about the challenge juggling quarterbacks in practice, and then uh, from an offensive efficiency standpoint, I think you guys were sixth mm-hmm. when Watson took over. You finished nineteenth. Uh, in just six games. So looking back at it now, did that affect um, you know the expectations, the aspirations you guys had for this season? I think two things can be true. I think number one, the circumstances regarding um, the trade for Deshaun 
in terms of you know managing it for Kevin and the staff, you know that that's certainly a challenge this year. At the same time, I think both of us would tell you that um, you know we wouldn't use that as a as an excuse for this year. Um, we obviously got good, really good quarterback play from Jacoby. Um, we felt like we had enough, you know, good players and enough opportunities to ultimately win, you know, win games this year um, to end at a different point in the season. Um, you know, but I also certainly don't want to, um, you know, minimize the unique dynamics in terms of managing the team on a on a week to week basis. Um, you know, for for Kevin and his assistants. When the suspension was moved to 11 games, I'm sure your goal didn't change, but did your expectation change? Our expectations are high every year. Um, you know, look, it, it's a performance business, um, and regardless of circumstance, everybody goes through some level of adversity. Um, and our mindset has been to, to, to win games, and we didn't do that enough this year. Kevin, do you, you hope to retain you some of your current uh, defensive assistants, and will you interview any of them for the DC job? So, yes, uh, on the first part. And again, I just haven't had the chance to talk to the entire. Uh, Steph, um, but I won't be interviewing them for that position. Wait, Kevin, did you say uh, yes? Oh, yes or no? You will or will not? Will, well, which part? <laughs> which question? Um, will you be interviewing present assistants for DC? No. Okay. Kevin, you play for nine months, but with a full season and off season of Deshaun, do you expect the design of the offense to be drastically different by the time you play again? <sighs> you know, I, I hope year to year you're you're different. You know, different being better. Uh, what, how drastic that is, you know, depends so much year to year. But, you know, ultimately we do want to, you know, maximize Deshaun's talents, maximize Nick Chubb, Dave Njoku, Amari. We want to make sure that we're putting all those guys in, in a good spot. So there's things that, yes, we want to get to this spring and summer that we have not gotten to just yet. Kevin, off of Zach's question, just how much – Deshaun's talked both yesterday and today about – looking forward to the sitting down with you and having conversations. How much of an input do you expect Deshaun to have on how the offense looks? I mean, obviously he's a yeah. critical piece, but how much of, of an impact are you have on the design? Yeah, I mean, spend time with Deshaun today, going to spend time with him tomorrow, talking ball, talking shop. So you always want your quarterback to be involved in – high level discussions about your offense and what you're doing because ultimately when the quarterback's comfortable in in those plays he makes them work it's just pretty simple so constantly uh, having that that dialogue with Deshaun uh, have done it you know ever since he's been starting you do that with all your starting quarterbacks but yeah he, he wants to be involved uh, he'll be in town we'll spend a lot of time together Andrew, as much time that's allowed I should say <laughs> you guys have talked about being the discipline and all of that. Um, but that motto last year and even into this year was smart, tough, and accountable. Is that still the goal for 2023 is to get back to those roots, to get this team smart, tough, and accountable? No, it, it is, Cam. And I, but I would also say that, you know, within that construct, you know, look, everybody's human. You know, every team across the league, every year that we're here, you're going to have guys that, that make mistakes, no different, no different than probably everybody in this room. And you try and deal with those on um, an individual basis, hand them inside within the, you know, within the rules of the team. Um, and we, have, we feel like we have a lot of guys that fit the bill there. Andrew, will you avoid, will you avoid um, players that have known sort of personality issues in the future to try to settle things down going forward from a discipline standpoint? Or do you guys feel like you have the infrastructure in place to handle some super strong personalities? I had a very wise coach once tell me that personality is welcome, but performance is production is mandatory. That's close that's enough for government work. <laughs> that's that's the approach we'll take. Yeah, 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 and absolutely. Yeah, I think come spend time in our meeting rooms, and and you'll there's personality. I mean, and that's you welcome that. It's we spend a lot of time together, so you want to keep things fresh. You know, you want things it to be fun out of practice. So. You definitely want personality on your football team. I think we have personality on our football team. Um, and then ultimately, yeah, you have to produce. That's what the game is about. But we're never going to be about, you know, trying to keep it super, you know, quiet. And, you know, it's not. This is for either one of you. Or both. You guys had a magical first year that you go to the playoffs. Are, you, are both of you a little surprised that it's been so hard just to get back there? Jim. It, I, I say this every year. 
every every season is unique. We we work in a super competitive sport, super competitive industry. It's hard to get to. It's hard and competitive to get to the playoffs. So to think that just because you go one year, um, just snap your fingers and go back, it takes a lot of effort. And we're back at we're back at base camp right here in January as we prepare for 2023. So we are under no illusions in terms of the work um, that it takes every year to try and scale the mountain and get back. Um, Kevin may know the statistic better than I do, but I, how much turnover is there per year? How many new playoff yeah. teams for it? I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, put okay. me on the spot. Well, it's it's, it's a fair amount of turnover. Research every, department, get on it. There we go. Right for for Tony. The, but 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 basically, look, it's it's hard. It's hard, and we and we and we don't underestimate that in, by any means. Andrew, Andrew, this year, do you, need, do you think you need organizationally to reevaluate either the importance and or style of your defensive tackles, just given how bad the run defense was? Yeah, I think Scott, you know. Quite honestly, like we will always um, try and match the, you know, the personnel to the the schematic vision for you know for the coach. So like our coaches do a really good job of telling us you know what they need in a what they need in a particular scheme or a particular defense. Um, you know certainly as certainly that position in particular. Um, you know, as as Kevin selects a, a defensive coordinator, we'll we'll link up with that individual and, and make sure that we're searching for individuals that have um, the traits and skills necessary to perform their job within that within that. Area. Andrew, given the nature of Deshaun's last couple of years, I mean, obviously expectations for it had to be somewhat tempered. You guys also organizationally had to have some kind of expectation for him when he played. Did he beat them? Did you get about what you'd expect? Yeah, look, I, I think we saw a lot of good moments from Deshaun, and we 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 feel very strongly in terms of um, you know really his pairing with Kevin, his skill set adding to the offense. Um, you know, he had his ups and downs throughout the six games. Um, you know, as to be expected. Um, you know, you saw you know his ability to make you know dynamic plays with his arms and his legs, but you also saw you know some of the you know some of the layoff as well. We feel good about the progress that he made. We feel good about the work that um, you know he, Kevin, the offensive coaches are going to do over the course of the off season, and we're we're very excited, um, very excited about him. You know, moving into 2023 and looking forward to uh, you know surrounding him with with different skill sets that will allow us to maximize the offense. In those six games, in those six games, Andrew he clearly wasn't at the level he was at in 2019 mm -hmm. or 2020 when he led the league in passing. Um, but given the, the level in, of investment you guys have made, draft picks, the contract, is it fair for, for fans to expect him to be at that level uh, off what you just said yeah. when you guys – in 2023. Yeah, we we we're we're excited about the job. We 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 feel we feel good about where he's going to be um, as we get into the off season. You know, work through training camp and, and ultimately start in September next year. Um, you know, we're we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to working with him. Sorry, will you retain Mike Prever? I, like I said earlier, with all the coaches, I haven't had a chance to sit down with every coach. So um, those are all things that we're working through. Off of that, Deshaun, the, you know, the, the thought was the roster was in really, really good shape, the core of the team. I know there's no such thing as a perfect roster. But when you look at going into this offseason, the, the assets you have available are a little different. You don't have first round pick, obviously. Um, has, has your view of maybe what you need to add to this roster changed dramatically? And if so, do you maybe see the need to maybe try and get back into the first round or, or improve your, your draft position so you can fill some of those needs? I'll answer it this way, Daryl. I th we will have um, you know more than enough in terms of like resources, picks, dollars, cap space um, to to fortify the roster in the areas that we that we need to. You guys, how would you evaluate the special teams from coaching, from kicking, hunting? How would you evaluate as a whole? <coughs> Yeah, I think, you know, played some good games, uh, certainly late especially. Uh, there were some challenges early, I think, with, with Cade. You know, you have a, a rookie at that position. You knew he was going to have ups and downs, but very confident about him moving forward. I thought Corey did really well, uh, worked in new returners throughout the season. So uh, I, I thought there were some really good moments and then areas that we really want to get better. We have a new uh, uh, let go of Joe, which he decided to could you talk about the decision with the special teams? Yeah, with, so made the decision last night with Joe. Uh, like I mentioned, with, with all of our coaches, I have not had a chance to sit down with all of our coaches yet. Uh, I'll do that over the next couple of days. Um, I believe in, in our coaching staff. I believe that we have a lot of really good fo football coaches. 
Uh, we're going to obviously set out on this defensive coordinator search starting this week. But uh, again, I really have to talk to all of our coaches uh, and work through everything this week. Andrew, over the last two years, I mean, you mentioned personality first production, right? Over the last two years, you've had players vocally speak out about things, and then maybe not, maybe on social media, accumulate and become a bigger issue. And we saw that with Clowney last week. How long of a leash do those guys get within your locker room before it almost becomes cancerous to your locker room and impacts what you're really trying to build? Yeah, I, look, I think ultimately um, you want to make sure that your players, um, if they are having an issue, whether it's with, you know, role or something else, you know, feel comfortable, you know, talking to their position coach, coordinator, you know, you name it. Um, you know, ultimately, you like to keep things in house, like probably like any NFL team. That doesn't always happen. Like you have moments like that every year. Uh, but but also like as we think about players, if they have a, a misstep or they, they they make a mistake, you really do try and look at the the whole body of work and then really the the individual context with the per, with the particular incident. Um, you know, I think Kevin he does a good job of managing that. Um, it's something that we'll continue to continue to do as we move forward. But um, you know, we, we feel like we have a good system in place there. Yeah. Speaker going to be different every year. Do you think that the culture of this team will have to be reevaluated in the off season? Again, when you lose, um, it, it, that's a fair question. For every losing team, you're going to ask about culture. Uh, I've said it, said it last week. You know, culture is people, and and you know, when you have the right people, you have the right culture. Uh, we didn't we didn't win enough games this season. We're, we're disappointed in that, uh, but we feel like we can certainly get better. We we certainly have high expectations for ourselves, a high standard set for ourselves, uh, and that's where when you're winning and you're having the, uh, the locker rooms after a win when everybody is very excited, that's when culture starts to build. Uh, when you're going through tough times, obviously, you know, it, it's, it becomes difficult in, in some areas, but I'm really proud about of our guys for how they fought to the end. Doesn't mean that we don't recognize that there are areas that we can improve, but that's really where our focus remains. Areas that we can improve and really starting today as we pull it apart. The last one here. Guys in the locker room have said, you know, communication has been kind of an issue from, you know, whether it's, you know, guys just not opening up. You know, football is a game of kind of in the old school, kind of be a man, like, you know, hold it in. Do you have to kind of drag it out of them to really be communicative? Because you guys have both said that your door, your door is open, you know, you're willing to talk about things, but it still seems like Miles was saying that guys aren't opening up and not saying what they need to say. Is that something that you really have to encourage these guys to be open because of kind of the, the culture of? Yeah, I mean, I, yes. Uh, I mean, I, th I think it's important that we, that you are, uh, you know, sharing with each other. Uh, I, you know, my door is always open, even when it's closed. Um, I, I want the guys to be, you know, uh, comfortable coming in, <laughs> talking to me, talking to their position coaches, what what have you. But uh, you know, you're absolutely right in terms of. You can have a football culture where you want to be, you know, tough and, and brave and, and keep things in, and and that's not what we believe here. And, and I've had conversations with our guys today about that very thing. And I think, uh, you know, it's important that everybody, as we take this break, gets healthy, obviously, but also gets mentally healthy, gets their spirit healthy, and part of that is is if they need to talk to somebody, doing that. I, I think it's vitally important.